Covalent bonding occurs when two or more atoms share electrons to achieve a noble gas configuration, or a full outer shell. The duet rule applies to hydrogen and helium and states that these two atoms are stable with only two electrons in their outer shell. While the octet rule says that all other elements have to have eight in their outer shell. To draw a Lewis structure, you have to sum the valence electrons for all the atoms. Then, use a pair of electrons to form bonds between each pair of bound atoms. Arrange the arra remaining electrons to satisfy the duet and octet rules, and then finally double or triple bond if necessary. So first, we need to count up our valence electrons for HF. Hydrogen has one valence electron. We can get that from looking at the periodic table. So it's in the first column which means that it has one valence electron. And then fluorine is in the seventh column, if you count over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so it has seven valence electrons. So altogether, that's gonna give us eight valence. We draw our two atoms with a pair of electrons between them, so each line counts as two. So now we have six electrons to work with. Those two electrons are for hydrogen and for fluorine. So hydrogen currently has two, and fluorine currently has two. Hydrogen is satisfied with just two, so we add the rest to fluorine to satisfy its octet rule which leaves us with no electrons. Double check that everything is satisfied, which it is. So that's the structure for hydrogen and fluorine or hydrofluoric acid. For nitrogen, you have 10 electrons. You draw your line, now we have eight. Each nitrogen needs six more. So we need 12, but we only have eight. When you need more than you have, you have to share more. So now we only have six and each nitrogen now needs four because they're sharing four. So we need eight, we only have six, so we share more. We have six, each nitrogen needs two more. So if you count them up, we've used two, four, six, eight, ten. So we do not have any more electrons. But, if you look at it, each nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8, and 2, 4, 6, 8. So, it's a stable atom. Always double check that you haven't used more than you had to start with, and that everything is satisfied. Go ahead and count up your valence electrons for NH3. You should have gotten 8 valence electrons. So we're gonna draw nitrogen in the middle and everything else coming off of it. So we've used six electrons. Each hydrogen is stable with just two, so those are fine. And then nitrogen needs two more, which we're gonna add as a lone pair. So NH3 has one lone pair and three bonding pairs of electrons. For CH4, it also has eight valence electrons. And we do not need any lone pairs because it's satisfied with just the hydrogens coming off of it. To draw the Lewis structure of NO negative is just like the others except we need to do two things differently. First, we have a negative charge, so that means that we had to have gained an electron. So nitrogen has five, oxygen has six, and we gain one, giving us 12 valence. Each of those needs six, which means we need 12 electrons. We don't have 12, so we have to share more. Now each need four, giving us eight needed, and we have eight. And so that's the structure. But don't forget brackets and the charge as well. Go ahead and solve the Lewis structure for hydrogen and phosphate ion.
you should have gotten two valence electrons for hydrogen. Attaching them, and you're done. For phosphate ion, first you needed to count up your valence electrons. You should have gotten 32. And then attached all the oxygens coming off of phosphorus. That was eight electrons that were accounted for. The phosphorus was good, but each oxygen needed six. So you needed to add three lone pairs or six electrons to each of the oxygens. That was our other 24 electrons. Don't forget the brackets in charge. Solve for PF3 on your own. You should have gotten 26 valence electrons. Phosphorus in the middle, three fluorines coming off. Subtracting your six electrons, each fluorine needs three lone pairs, and phosphorus needs one lone pair. That fulfills all the octets. There's two exceptions to the octet rule. Boron and beryllium usually have less than eight electrons, so satisfy everything else. And if you have extra electrons, you can place them on boron and beryllium. But don't double or triple bond to satisfy them. And finally, elements in the third energy level and above can have more than eight electrons in their outer shell. And that's because they have an empty d orbital. So if you look at the periodic table, starting with sodium, technically they can have more than eight electrons. Reason being, there's no 2D. If we look at sulfur's electron configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. It also has a 3D. The 3D is just zero. So sulfur can place two more in the 3p, and then it can place extras in that 3D. So I'm going to draw the Lewis structure for PCl5. To do that, we need to count up our valence electrons, phosphorus having five, each chlorine having seven. So that gives us 40 valence. So we can have phosphorus in the middle, all the chlorines coming off. That's 10 electrons. And then each chlorine it needs six. So six times five, that's our other 30. And phosphorus has 10, which it can because it's in that third energy level. So we're good. Go ahead and solve the next three on your own, restarting the iPod when you have your answers. You should have gotten 26 valence electrons. You had 20 left, and so each oxygen needed 6 electrons, and Xeon needed 2. For beryllium chloride, we have 16 valence electrons. Our chlorines each need 6 which means we do not have any electrons left over for beryllium. So beryllium just has four. That's fine. Do not double or triple bond to satisfy beryllium as well because it's an exception. Any other element besides beryllium or boron would have to have double bonds. Finally, for I3 negative, we have our three iodines attached and then three lone pairs on each iodine. So when you have extra electrons, stick them on the central atom, assuming the central atom can hold more than eight electrons.